Welcome to this video lecture. Here I will explain about attention in NLP. You don't need to know all of this to implement and understand these models, but it can be a good thing to understand a little bit more what is actually going on or under the hood and why attention works or how it works. All in all, we have four different types of attention mechanisms and those are what you can see here. I will introduce attention and how it came from encoder-decoder recurrent neural networks. In the next my videos, I will introduce how self-attention mechanism is working. Afterwards, I will do the same with multi-hit attention as well. In this video, we will talk about the first item. On the first row, you can see here, this is the encoder-decoder. The next one here, we have self-attention. Now here we have a very similar attention, and here we look in both directions. And because we are looking both directions, we would call this bidirectional attention. And then the final one down here, we have multiple attention hits, so we can call it a multi-hit attention. In the next my videos, we will dive deeper into each of these. For now, in this video, we will try understand what actually makes the encoder-decoder attention work. The first attention mechanism that we will focus on is the dot product or encoder-decoder attention. When we perform a lot of tasks, we would typically convert a word to a vector. That is a word to vec. These vectors allow us to represent meaning numerically. With that, we can perform logical arithmetic on the vectors. Because of this, we would expect sentences with similar meaning to have a similar set of values. It is king-queen example right here, to have a similar set of values. As in our example in Neuro Machine Translation, how are you in English has an equivalent in Italian, ciao ciao wa, should share a similar matrix representation. Now, when we iterate through each word and compare the individual vectors between the two sequences, we should find that words such as hello and ciao have high similarity than words have no different meanings, such as how and ciao. This is what I'm showing here. We have the English phrase hello, how are you? We map it against ciao comme voi over in this similarity function, which is our attention mechanism. What we find is between similar words, we have a higher attention activation, and where are dissimilar words, like hello and come, we have a lower activation. And the same logic works for each pair of words. Now, we can display this relationship a little bit using a heat map. Here darker blocks mean higher similarity and lighter blocks lower similarity. The similarities between these vectors is known as alignments. This is different to attention. We first calculate alignments between the two vectors using the dot product. Let's have these two vectors you and we, we can calculate a dot product. It is uh, in the middle right here, which is represent a dot. And we can represent this using the magnitude of u multiplied by magnitude of we multiplied by cosinus theta. And theta here is the angle between two vectors. Now, the actual calculation that we perform we don't need to calculate the angle here, because we can actually calculate the dot product like this. So, we take the sum of each value between our two vectors, from the first value index to the index n, and here we have the values from each of the vectors ui and vi. So, what we are doing here is multiplying each respective value between these two vectors and taking the sum of the products of all of those. Now, when we do this, we could have a very high dimensional vectors. 
we could have a vector with hundreds of values in it. So let's simplify things a little bit and imagine we have a three dimensional vector because with three dimensional vector we can visualize it. So here we have three vectors. First one is hello, second is hi, and the last one is tomato. Each of these is a three dimensional vector. Each of them items have three values within it. And because they are three dimensional, we can put them into a 3D chart. So let's import matplotlib by plot as plt. Let's initiate the first figure. What we are going to do it to create a 3D plot. So to do that, we need to add a subplot here. The projection is 3D. Okay, so we have our 3D projection now. We need to put some data here. So we need to separate those into our XS, IS and ZS. So XS will be zero index from each vector. Hello, hi and tomato. Let's copy that and we will do the same for IS and ZS. For IS, we will need the index equal one from each vector. And for ZS, do the same. Here we will use index equal two from each vector. And now what we want to do is to create a scatter plot. As arguments, we use all three variables, XS, IS, and ZS. For the size argument, let's try 100. Now, this will zoom right into then I want to see everything between 0 and 1. For this, I need to set some limits into my plot. That I'm doing right now, just like that. Good. Let's do the same for all axes, x, i, and z also. Good. So now, when we look at this, we can see our 3D plot and these two vectors here. These are hi and hello. And over here we have tomato. Here we check for alignments. We could expect these two to have a greater alignments than they do with the other vector, tomato. To measure this alignment, we need to calculate the dot product between each one of our vectors. It is a good time to import numpy right here. And let's rename our vectors as A, B and C. In A, we have hello, in B, we have hi, and in C, we have tomato. Let's grab this code snippet. The reason to do that, I want to demonstrate how we actually taking this. Remember from the last slide, we calculate u multiplied by v with this equation. We can change i index here to zero, and this one n minus one to be more grammatically correct. So at the index zero, let's take hello and hi. What we will do is we take the zero index of hello, which is 0 0.71 multiply by 0 0.69, which is hi. And then we are doing the sum of all these here, 0.14, 0 0.15 as the index 1 from hello and hi. And lastly, 0 0.51, 0 0.48 as the index equal to from hello and hi. Remember from the code, this would give us a dot product alignment between A and B. An easy way of tackling this is if we do a matrix annotation here, and here if we do a multiplied by B transposed. So we transpose a vector that taking it from 0, 1, 2 into this 0, 1, 2. And that is basically what dot product is. So we are multiplying these two vectors and you can see here, you can write it like this, or you can write it like this. Now back in Python, here actually two operations we can do here. We can use numpy matrix multiplication, which is matmul with A and B transposed. And here we got an alignment. 
or we can also do numpy dot which is the product of a and b as you can see we got the same answer a lot of people recommend to use mathml because it is more explicit where the behavior of numpy dot function is implicit so here is the alignment between a and b let's compare alignments between a and c and between b and c as well remember higher value means higher alignment perfect alignment would be equal to one which i will show you in a moment let's do it numpy mathmal a c transposed and it is equal around 0 0.446 then numpy mathmal b c transposed and it is equal around 0 0.434 that's what we would expect now we may thinking okay if we had perfect alignment we would expect value on one now this is not the case because with the dot product here we don't get a perfect similarity function and in the case where we have a larger range of values dot product is not that great in that case we would probably use something like cosine similarity but dot product is what we would typically use here and it is what we use for attention. Finally, if you pass A and A in NumPy MathMal, you can expect 1. However, if we calculate that, we see that we don't. We get this around 0.78. Of course, I mean there is a better alignment if we compare other ones, but it is not quite perfect. So this is the math of attention in high level. In the next part we will go a little bit further into it and there we will look at various keys and wallets. Let's look to the coder and coder attention more from mathematical aspect. Dot product attention. We have three different components which are the core of the attention. Q query. Key key. And we wallet key and value from our English text which is right here and query is coming from our Italian text right here in this case we have our decoder on the right and encoder here on the left the first thing that we are doing here is encoder part is embedding our English text using this embedding layer and then we are passing this to the separate linear layers so the output of the embedding layer here is exactly the same for the inputs that go into the values and keys here and here are the linear layers which are differentiate them and also we have the linear layer of the query all in all this produce our query key and wallet tensors and the next thing we have to do is to calculate a dot product which is what you can see in the middle right here so we are taking the key transposed and multiplying it by query and this produces this vector here keep attention into dimensionality here initially we have three by four vectors for keep transposed we have four by three and for query we have three by four we multiply these together these two dimensions are removed and what we get is a 4x4 four four vector. This is just an example. In reality, you gonna have dimensions of 716 or 512 or similar big sizes. They can be quite big vectors. Good to note that initial vector's dimension correspond to number of words that we have in our inputs. And here we have four vectors. On this side, we have three words and here we should have three vectors as well corresponding input words when we are building that we must have both our encoder and decoder inputs at the same length so what we would have here is another token which is a padding token right here in the corner so we have this padding vector in query matrix right here let's jump a little bit to the top of the schema we have the softmax layer here which give us the probabilities across the whole array and then we have these values here this matrix is just our wireless tensor 
in this step we multiply that by the output of our dot product which is processed through softmax transformation let's talk about dimensionality again here we have 3 by 4 and here we have 4 by 4 now if we multiply 3 by 4 by 4 by 4 the result dimension will be 3 by 4 and this is our final vector let's give it a name z z is our attention product so that's how we calculate it